Thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about accelerating biology. It's kind of strange for me to be talking about this topic because a couple of years ago, um, I never, I, I had never invested in a biotech uh, company, and I would have actually avoided it actively because why would a seed, uh, you know, and a, uh, you know, a, a, a venture capital firm with less than say fifty million dollars to play in in some biotech investment want to uh, invest in biotech, right? Um, but actually, the world has changed. Uh, this is not your father's uh, Oldsmobile. Old -mobile. This is not your father's biotech anymore. And there's, there's quite a different uh, world uh, that is now possible in the areas of synthetic biology and biodesign that, that was never, never uh, accessible for early stage investors before. It's really, really changed extraordinarily rapidly, and I'd like to take you through, uh, take you through that. Um, so uh, first, a little bit of background on uh, SOS Ventures. Uh, we invest about $50 million a year uh, in startups. Uh, we run uh, the world's leading vertical market accelerators in several different vertical areas. We pioneered the area of vertical market acceleration back in 2010 or so when we launched China Accelerator which is still the leading software accelerator uh, for, the, for the Asian China firewall sort of uh, market uh, space. Uh, IndieBio, uh, which is this new program for biotech, which we'll be talking about. Um, Hacks, which is Hackcelerator, which launches around 30 or so consumer electronics uh, companies a year, uh, and, uh, and a few other programs uh, globally. So we have a 55 uh, person uh, organization, which you, you look at us and you say, $230 million, uh, you know, how could you possibly have 55, million, uh, 55 people running around the place with, uh, with just that small of a fund? It's because we focus completely on heavily uh, deep domain expertise in you know, heavily concentrated areas like uh, Internet of Things, uh, robotics, um, and, um, and biotech now. People with PhDs uh, from you know, Cambridge and uh, Princeton uh, and genetics degrees uh, from the UC system and whatnot that are focused, say, on IndieBio or people uh, in the hardware area, industrial designers, uh, you know, uh, design for manufacturing, et cetera. So we run these vertical market accelerators all, all around. But just last year, uh, for the first time, we ran the world's first synthetic biology accelerator, uh, which uh, we're going to uh, uh, talk about in a little bit more detail and talk about the lessons that we've learned uh, by investing in biology at the early earliest possible stages. Of the 130 companies that graduate uh, SOSV accelerators uh, per year out of the many thousands that apply, um, at this point, uh, one third of our uh, graduates are uh, coming out of the biotech area. Um, 30 are coming in the consumer electronics and, and so on. Um, what we see in the bio uh, space um, are two different areas of, of interest. Synthetic biology uh, with companies, a, lot, a number of these companies have been in the news recently, Clara Foods, Mufri, Pembient. These are uh, new ways of producing uh, outputs, uh, desired outputs, like for example, uh, milk, uh, egg whites, uh, rhino horns, uh, other types of things which you can construct without using animals or, or plants to do, to do that. And biosystems, all the tools, the picks and shovels that enable the production of these uh, uh, facilities. So does, that, does anyone know what biology is, uh, basically? You know, what, what's biology, right? Here's the answer. The study of uh, animals and plants, right? So what is synthetic biology then? You know. Uh, it's actually engineering these new life forms, these new organisms, uh, to, do, to produce the outputs of biology uh, without actually requiring the animals or requiring the plants. Um, so uh, it's a big idea. Uh, it's hard to sort of shift your mind to understand that. Uh, but it's actually, uh, it's the, the world is changing at an extraordinarily rapid rate. In, in the year 2000, it cost a billion dollars to sequence the human genome. Fifteen years later, it costs a thousand dollars to sequence the human genome. Um, in uh, 1982, um, 
uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about the, a basic example here. Um, if you have a feedstock, say, uh, I'll, I'll use a different example. If you have a feedstock like grass and you give it to a cow, uh, the outputs of the cow are poop, methane, and milk, right? So you get, take a feedstock, run it through an organism, and it gives you outputs. Uh, th this is another example with a feedstock, uh, you know, grains and water and, and such, uh, sometimes pills in order to, you know, uh, protect the animal from, you know, antibiotics and growth hormones and things like that to get it producing bigger eggs. Uh, the organism itself, uh, and then the, 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 then the outputs. That's, that's how people used to grow food back in the early 21st century. Uh, now, uh, in the new uh, 21st century, uh, we're growing uh, food using a feedstock, like water, uh, and simple other supplies that can be gotten from the air, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, and glucose, e easy, uh, very, very inexpensive feedstocks, running it through an organism, which is just a cell, and a cell uh, you know, has instructions uh, in, in its DNA, uh, that tell, given an input, what output to produce. So you just put in uh, into the, to the cell your code. Um, it's called biocode. Some people refer to this as biocoding. And you get your output. So feedstock into an organism uh, gives you your uh, egg whites. So, you know, the first, one of the first examples of this was a company called Genentech uh, that in 1982 uh, produced... Um, insulin uh, for the first time using a human, uh, you know, engineered uh, insulin production. Before that, this is my mom, by the way, um, if, in case you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> so it's always good to have a picture of your mom for non, no important reason in the middle of the uh, presentation. <laughs> I, I, find, I find that works. Uh, but actually, there is a little bit of a reason. She had diabetes. Um, and so uh, back in, before 1982, before Genentech made insulin available, uh, you know, the way that they used to collect, uh, you know, for people who, you know, uh, you know wh whose pancreas wasn't producing the uh, in insulin, what they would used to do is they'd go to these slaughterhouses, they'd, uh, you know, they'd collect the pancreas of cows and pigs, and they'd get the insulin out of that, and they'd feed that to human beings. Uh, messy business, um, and uh, not necessarily all that uh, safe. Uh, and uh, when Genentech uh, came out, uh, it cost them hundreds of millions of dollars actually to create uh, that first synthetic uh, biology uh, output uh, of you know, growing an organism that could take an input and produce the output of actually human insulin because they took the DNA of a human, uh, you know, and by the way, I'm not a scientist, so I may be saying things that are completely inaccurate, um, but uh, just, just bear with me. Um, so, uh, and then they, then they uh, you know, injected that DNA into uh, uh, an organism uh, so that it would take and produce human insulin without even requiring a pancreas. So, um, that's, what, that's what's so exciting, actually, uh, today about um, this entire field of biology. Um, it is a massively, massively, unbelievably changed world. It's a new era that is beginning today uh, for, uh, for the production of huge uh, new uh, you know, uh, compounds, uh, outputs, and huge new possibilities. Um, because when you look at how we do things today, or how we used to do things in the 20th century, in the early 21st century, it used to be super resource intensive to produce things like egg whites and, and milk and, and even uh, THC from pot plants. Uh, right? You used to actually have to grow a plant over a couple of months, give it lots of nutrients and everything, and then, and then and harvest it, you know, avoid all the, the cops overhead with their helicopters, you know, and, and, then, and then try to, you know, create the output of your, uh, your, your harvested uh, pot, right? Uh, but these days, you don't have to do that anymore. You can actually create an organism that produces the THC directly from a feedstock. Uh, this is a company called Hyacinth, which is actually one of the companies that launched last year. And you can take basically 500, uh, like an oil drum, 55-gallon uh, drum, $500 worth of raw materials, 
do some bioprocessing on it, and up, end up with three and a half million dollars worth of street value in, in, in Denver, uh, THC in a 55 uh, gallon uh, drum. So it's, it's really quite remarkable, and there's a good rate of return on that uh, if you are into medicinal uh, marijuana. Um, uh, so that's just an example, but we can also produce milk for less than it costs, uh, when I say we, I'm talking about a company called Mufri, which is also out of uh, IndieBio from last year's program. Produce milk at a fraction of the cost that it takes a farmer to put a cow out to the field and, uh, and, uh, and then bring it back in and, and uh, milk it every day, chain it up to a machine. So, um, so uh, it used to be re really resource intensive to produce food and other sorts of petrochemicals even that we can now produce using synthetic biology. And it also used to be very, very expensive to do this. Uh, as I mentioned, it cost hundreds of millions of dollars for G Genentech to, to create the uh, insulin. Now, actually, I think, Ryan, one of our companies is working on an open source uh, insulin, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's actually gonna be, uh, you know, relatively free uh, to, to, produce, uh, to produce this. Um, and yeah, it, it requires people who really have a, a, a deep knowledge of the science, but it only costs a, a few thousand dollars uh, to produce uh, a, a new organism that you program. Um, so uh, I, I know some of you who may know biotech may know a lot more than I do about this topic, but it is absolutely fascinating how easy it is to program life these days and how inexpensive it is. There's desktop machines where you can, uh, and we backed uh, one of these last year uh, called, uh, what's the one in Austria? Desktop, Desktop gen gen Genetics? No, no, that, that's another one, yeah. Anyway, sorry, uh, we backed a lot of companies. Uh, but it produces like a thousand base pairs uh, for a couple thousand uh, uh, dollars and you can print off your own new DNA uh, instructions for, for cells uh, in, a, in a space of a few hours. So, um, it's really kind of ex exciting uh, when you think about it. Now it's, it's more uh, resource efficient uh, to produce uh, a wide variety of uh, things for a wide variety of applications. So say you want to produce egg whites and you, here I, I know in California there's a water shortage. You can produce egg, egg whites for one fifth and I had some yesterday, uh, some uh, egg whites whipped up into a delicious meringue and, and, and it was really fabulous. Uh, uh, and so I invite if anyone wants to have some of the, those uh, newly engineered uh, egg whites uh, to, to uh, contact us. Um, but, uh, you know, and we can produce egg whites for one-fifth of the, the water uh, usage uh, that a, a chicken would take uh, to produce uh, egg whites, for example. So, um, uh, you know, let me just draw a, a long uh, sort of long-term view uh, of, of how this market is developing. Um, it used to be in the, um, in the world that I grew up in, uh, mainframe, when I was born, mainframe computers were all the rage, right? PCs hadn't yet been invented. Um, and so in the 70s and 80s, uh, it used to cost quite a bit to have these, you know, multi-million dollar uh, centers where you would uh, have, uh, you know, these data processing centers with these big mainframes and you take an input like data and you'd output whatever your, whatever your data processing routines would, would be. But it would only work for certain applications. And that's kind of the way that, that in bioprocessing instead of data processing, that's the way that it's been before. Like, you know, these big pharma uh, labs would spend billions of dollars producing, uh, you know, the equivalent of mainframes uh, that, that take uh, the, the, um, the inputs and, and sell uh, expensive uh, products for small, small markets. Then PCs came along, obviously, and, and uh, opened up and democratized the ability for many, many other types of uh, data processing. So now, of course, we all carry around data processing, many different types of data processing in our, um, in our pockets. Um, and uh, that same uh, shift that happened in the 1980s for the information in infrastructure is now happening in the 2015 uh, time frame. Whereas it used to cost hundreds of millions to d develop insulin, it now costs you know, thousands or tens of thousands to develop the new, uh, new compounds and new um, um, processes. So that actually, for the first time, for seed investment, makes it possible 
for us uh, investors in the room to participate in the new revolution in the same way that people used to uh, back software companies, uh, you know. But now with much bigger impact, we're talking trillion dollar industries um, and, uh, and huge, huge life-changing uh, opportunities for people. You know, there's a company in last week's uh, TechCrunch, uh, they covered Bolt Threads. They tried uh, with some new, um, new spider-derived silk. They used to try it making silk uh, from the spider's output uh, making, they actually genetically programmed a goat to produce the, the same silk as the spider to try to produce it in larger quantities. That didn't work. Now they're just using synthetic biology to produce the, uh, the, the silk, and that's working uh, enough so that uh, the VCs backed it with a $40 million uh, funding round. So in other words, this has really changed uh, the, the landscape for, and the possibilities uh, for, uh, for what, what's what's now possible in, uh, in, the, in, in the investment world. So that's why SOS Ventures is doing uh, 40 new companies a year uh, through our Indie Bio program in uh, synthetic biology. So people ask, well, what types of investments can we make? You know, what, what are the different categories there of investable uh, propositions are there? There's output materials, such as what we talked about, eggs, uh, you know, milk, uh, com chemical compounds, loads of opportunities in that. There's, bio there's picks and shovels, things that help companies produce the, uh, the, the, the outputs, you know, the bioreactors that grow, the, the, like a fermentation process that the beer would go through previously. They, the bioreactor is called, uh, I forget what they call it in beer. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you know, there's bioreactors where you grow the, 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 the outputs, uh, and then there's loads of other sort of tools that, that are involved. There's infrastructure uh, systems, et cetera. So in, here's, here are some companies in each one of these segments. Uh, you know, synthetic biology, uh, these are different uh, companies that are producing incredible uh, new um, outputs at a tiny fraction of the cost that it used to uh, that it used to uh, be. Um, systems uh, tools like Kilobaser, which is basically, th that's the machine I was talking about before where uh, you can, it's like a 3D printer like on your desktop, but instead of printing uh, you know, a glass or, or, or a wrench or something, it, it'll print DNA. Um, and, and it's at the, sort of the same uh, price point. And then you can insert that DNA into an organism uh, and, uh, and have your new life form. Um, and, uh, and then other uh, sorts of uh, tools in that area. There's biosystems infrastructure, uh, like for example, Arcturus BioCloud, uh, which is a company that launched uh, yesterday at IndieBio's launch day here in San Francisco. SOS Ventures, by the way, has a new 15,000 square foot facility we've opened up a block away from here with a level two human tissue uh, lab. Uh, is that, am I saying this right? Biosafety level two, uh, you know, uh, lab, uh, just just down the street here, where all of this work is 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 actually uh, taking place. We also have another bio lab uh, down in Dogpatch. Um, so uh, we, uh, but that kind of infrastructure, uh, Arcturus BioCloud, basically allows somebody from like uh, Amazon Web Services for biotech. Uh, if you don't want to set up your own web server. You can use the, the, the servers, the bio servers, which will actually, you give it the programming, the DNA you'd like to load into the organism, and it will remotely do it for you. Th those kinds of things are what we would call in the biosystems in infrastructure. And then, of course, biomedical designs. Uh, we, we have uh, many companies that are doing fascinating things for new forms of drug discovery, et cetera. So, um, I think that's all I uh, have to, to cover today, and I'd just like to, oh, regulatory issues. Um, if, if anyone has any questions on regulatory issues, perhaps uh, uh, we, we can answer those. But are there any, any general questions? Yes. I didn't notice, uh, Genomics would be one of the air areas, like, uh, okay, so the, the question was, uh, didn't focus, there was no focus on the genomics. Um, so, you know, less than, far less than 1% of uh, the human genome is actually really decoded and run uh, in, at, at large, uh, uh, 
you know, um, so, so for example, we really don't understand enough about the programming that's already inside the, the human DNA or other forms of DNA. And, uh, and if we can uh, go into those areas, there's a whole area of data sciences and lab opportunities that are in that space. So yeah, that would be something that would be an opportunity and I'd probably put that sort of in the line with um, uh, the uh, infrastructure, was it in the infrastructure, like the info information services. Uh, but uh, because that's not so much about the outputs, but it's about what, what's possible. Yes? Is any of this happening on a large scale commercially, like eggs and milk, flour, is it? All of those, all of those co companies are sort of going into production now. Like I mentioned the eggs company, that could, just got uh, funded yesterday, $1.7 million for its first, uh, you know, the milk company got funded by Horizon Ventures, which is a big Hong Kong uh, thing for a couple of million dollars last year. Uh, these are all actually probably two, two to three years before, maybe sometimes five years or more before it replaces all cows. Yes. Uh, I was just gonna. You gotta like. I was just gonna do a attack on statement to that. So, yeah. what very few people know is that industrial scale biology is happening right now. So, if you go to anywhere you grow corn or sugar, so Brazil or the Midwest, there are these huge like refineries, like mega scale refineries, and that's where all of this biology is fermented. It needs sugar. So we get our vitamins from there, we get our flavorings from there, we get a lot of enzymes from there as well. And if you have any technical questions, you know, uh, uh, you know Ryan is uh, with, uh, can answer them. I'm not the scientist, I'm the investor. There's a lot of investment opportunities in this space. I'm, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Um, so anyway, I have to uh, exit the stage left as I'm being yanked off. So uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention.